All right, so we've got those it's six problems. I think it's 191, 192, 193, 201, 202, and 211. Um, remember, 211, you can just use your answer from 201 to solve it. So this starts, this is concerns uh, finding moments, which I think in physics you refer to as torque. Is that the word you use in physics? Yep. Same thing, okay? You know, you can always think of a torque wrench if you're thinking about torque. All right, so what you're going to do here is uh, the approach on this stuff. If you want to find the moment about A, now that's the common wording that's used, so get used to that. Moment about, about means the point about which you calculate moments. I mean, that's the standard verbiage on that. What you do is you break up the forces into x's and y components, and you combine those with x and y moment arms to get the moment. Okay? So what you do to get a moment, and I guess I'd say, well, any kind of, well, a 2D moment, let's just say that. What you do is you can take fx times dy. Now, I don't mean a calculus dy there. I mean d for distance. Okay, or, or and, maybe a better word, f sub y times d sub x. Okay, so you combine unlike force components and distance components, yeah. Uh, so in our, um, in our book, it's, it's flipped, so. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. Thanks, yeah, okay. Man, I, there was some problems with these things. So, yeah, that thing's vertical, right? Is it like yes. that? Thanks. Same force though, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. It's almost identical besides, yeah, the, the x and the y, I guess, sides are Thanks. swapped. All right. And then, so this is 0.72 meters, and that's 0.24 meters? Yes. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right. But that's the basic approach there. So, and then you watch your signs, okay? What you've got is by the right-hand rule, counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Okay, that's, that's how that works. So in this example here, I would look at doing cosine of 55 times the force, which is 820 newtons. And then I would multiply that by 0.72 meters. So what I've got there, when I do the cosine of 55, I'm doing that right angle trig thing where I'm finding this component when I do that because the cosine is adjacent to the 55 degree angle. And so that gets me the x component, and then what I'm multiplying that by is a y component of distance. Again, that's not a calculus dy, that's a distance in the y. Now, after I've combined those components, what I do is I look at it, and I come up with a sign. Now, if I take moments about right there, and I push on the top to the right, the top's going to come around that away, right? And that's clockwise, so that's negative. Now, if you have any doubts about that, I guess most of us have a calculator with us, and they're rectangular. So just put that on the table, put your index finger at point A, and push with your other index finger to the right at the top, and you will see that that will indeed rotate clockwise. So if that's any challenge to you to get the signs on those, that's how I would uh, figure it out. Okay? Okay, then you got the other one, and that's doing this, right? So I think that other one's going to be a plus, and I'll let you figure that one out. And when you combine those two things, you should get the total uh, moment, as we call it. I don't remember what that is. It, I, I think the answer for that one's in your book anyway. Negative 177. Okay, so negative 177. So there we go. All right, so that's the basics of doing these two-dimensional moments right there. Now, of course, there's all sorts of little things that can get thrown into this that make it perhaps a little more complex sometimes, but that's the basics of it. So, have you got any questions on that? The sign convention and the approach you use to do these or any of that stuff? Anything? Okay. All right, now, now these get a little bit more complicated as we work our way through them. So we good? Okay. 
The next one here um, is like that. Now, now you've got two forces. You're still taking a moment about A. So what you're going to do on this one is just combine everything, just add everything up. There'll be, uh, depending on how you approach it, three or four terms. And you just need to combine them all. So when I look at that, what I'm seeing is I'm going to break up the 1900. I'm going to use this triangle right here to do it. That's 1900. That's going to be cosine 50. 1900, because that's the adjacent side to the angle. This will be sine 50. 1900, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is apply those forces right at the corner, though. So even though I've got that triangle drawn up as shown, because I, when I'm doing trig, I think in terms of triangles, I'm going to apply them here and here. So I'm going to get those two components like so. You all with me there? Fy, Fx, okay. And then I'll just start combining them. So if I want to get Fy, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take sine of 50. That'll get me the Y component of the total, which is 1900. So there's Fy. So when I combine those, I get Fy. I'm going to use an X distance, 1.6 meters. Then I say, okay, if I push down on this, what's it going to do? It's going to go clockwise, so that gets a negative. Okay. You're actually going to have two other terms, and when you add those up, you'll come up with 154 newton meters. Now, the one thing with this one, when you look at what's going on at B, is you've got those two forces. What's that X force going to do? Is that going to create any moment? No, because it's pushing Yeah, because it's pushing right at A, okay? So if you want to twist a nut, you don't push right on the nut because that doesn't cause it to spin. You've got to offset to get the nut to spin, okay? So that's kind of what's up with that, is you, you need an offset. Okay, so you'll have three terms there. Okay, are we good with that? Right. Okay, now this one is uh, maybe a little bit trickier and could get a little messier, but I've got a suggestion on this. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want, but here's how I would approach this. See, our when we're looking at the, the world and how it works and all that, we tend to make X horizontal and Y vertical. That's how we think about things. But you don't have to do it that way, okay? You could, you could use an inclined axis system. So if I were doing this one, I'd probably do this. Okay? And approach it that way. So when you do that, um, what you would have here would be, for instance, you'd have a 61 degree angle. See how the thing's dimensioned that way? Everything's dimensioned to that angled strut there. I didn't put another point here, but if that's AB, everything's dimensioned along AB. So it's handy to use this inclined axis approach, is what I would call this. I'm using uh, axes that are at an angle, which you, if you want to be fancy, I call that inclined axes. Inclined. So if I'm going to do it that way, what I would do is I would go, okay, I've got a 61 degree angle with the axis. So if I go sine of 61 of the 420, I'm going to get that Y prime component. And then what I want to do is multiply it by the X prime distance, which you're given, it's 0.4 meters, okay? And that will come around clockwise, so that will get a negative sign. Okay. Yeah. On the top ones, we can do also the same, like, yeah. when I say cosine 49 times 700 times 0.4. All right, now when we're doing this, you got to remember what, mom what point you're taking moments about and measure all of your distances from that point. So you got to be a little bit careful there about the distances. You know, I see that point 4 out there, and I, I tend to want to use point 4, but I want this distance here. I want point 8, okay? Because I'm taking moments about A. Okay, so when I 
That will be the proper moment arm. And then I don't think I want, I, I want probably sine 49 for that component. Because yeah. the sine of 49 will get me this, which is what I want. Okay. Are we all right with that? Yeah. Yeah. So the X the yeah, now the X component, see what that, or X prime component, I guess I should call it, what that'll do is that'll go this way. And that goes right through A, so I'm not too worried about that for causing moment. Okay. So I guess would you have a uh, cosine um, for the other, other one, or is it the same concept? That same concept, okay. yeah. See, if I get any force that's going from A to B, it's going to go right through A. It won't cause a moment about A. Right. So I can ignore it okay. as far as moments go. Okay. So any of those X prime components on that bar, they're going to go right through A. Their line of action will act through A, so I can ignore them as far as moment goes. I want the Y prime components and use the X prime distances. Okay. Would you still use the 420 for the weight? Well, we're just using the the uh, Y prime component of it. Yeah. Yeah. But so, I mean, for the second angle, you would just use the Y prime component of it, and it would be of at point B. Um. Not, well, let's see. I mean, I now the weight is applied right there at that center of gravity. The weight's going that way. The Y prime component of it. So that's the sine sixty one four twenty then yeah. times point four. So what would you use for the second? The one? Yeah, you given the force, 700. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, 700. So, okay. yeah so it's given. So you said we don't have to worry about the X values because they don't take any... Yeah, they don't, there's no offset about the about point A. They push right through point A. Because we have to worry about the Y component. About the y prime component, y prime. yeah. And both sides between the top one and the bottom one. I was thinking to do like to find the length of uh, y and x and y and x. So you can do it that way, but it's easier. This is a quicker, more direct solution to do it this way by using the x prime and y prime axes. Um, it just it just knocks it out quicker. Subjects. And it's a nice little trick. We'll, we'll use this some other times too. So I decided to show it to you. Okay. It's it's a trick that I use. So that's much fun to do, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. and it can, you know, that's going to be a handy way to analyze things. Okay. All right. Other questions on that? Okay. okay. All right. Then we get into three D moments. And, you know, this will definitely be on the midterm on Monday. So you want to get this lined out. This is a series of steps that you walk through. So you want to get these steps figured out. And this one feeds right into 211. So remember, your answer can go right into 211 on this one. All right, so what we're going to do on this is step number one, we're going to find the force. Now this one's a little different than the one we did in class. The one we did in class, um, the force was based on position vectors. This force is just based on angles. Okay, so if you run through this one, you'll get FC is 595 minus 182 and 503. So this first step is to find that force vector at C. And I'm using this the cosine of the three angles with that to, to, find, the, to find that. So we okay with that? Get FC. Okay, now the next step is what you do is you're going to find the moment. And to, to do that, you need a vector from A to C. So you start at the point you're taking moments about. And you always have that, you know, there's always standard vocabulary or ways of phrasing things that are used. And that's a very common term, a moment about 
point whatever, okay? And so that means we're taking moments around point A. That's what that little phrase means, and that's the standard phrase that's used to express that. Now, we're going from A to C, so we want to use R-A-C, which means uh, from A to, oops, from A to C, okay? That's the meaning of that. And what we're going to do then to find the moment about A is it's a vector. You're going to take R and you're going to cross it with F. That's how that goes. And that should be right on your formula sheet so you'll remember that. And it's right there. And so you just need to find those two things and then cross them. So M is R crossed with F. So I've got the force vector already, so I need to find the position vector that goes from A to C. Now, if you look at your formula sheet, you're given the fact that if you want AC, actually in your formula sheet, it's called AB, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, call them whatever the heck you want. Um, in this case, it's AC. You're going to take RC minus RA. So you've got to remember to switch the order of the letters when you do the subtraction to get the proper vector. So we're going to go C minus A, and that will get us the vector AC. All right. So just take those vectors, line them up, subtract them in columns. Watch your signs. You always have that little thing that goes off in your mind when you're doing this. It says watch signs, okay? Because <laughs> it's common to drop them or to do something on these because you get negatives of negatives and all that. You just got to pay attention to it. And, you know, when I'm done, if I got 10 seconds, I'll look at it. I'll go, does that go with positive x? I'll go, yeah, it goes positive x. Does that go negative y? Yeah, I guess it does, doesn't it? Does it go negative z? Yeah, it looks about right. Okay, you know, I'll, I'll just do a quick check just to make sure my answer is realistic. Okay. So that's how I get from A to C. So I take C minus A. So 1.1, negative 1.6. 1.1, negative 1.6, and then negative 2.9. Okay. All right, and then I just do a cross. So the cross product is how you find moments. I've got the formula outlined there on the right. You've got it on your formula sheet given vectors A and B. Now, as I've mentioned a couple of times, I, I learned to do this using a determinant, so that's how I do it. But however the heck you want to do it, it's, it's right there for you, okay? Now, on the formula sheet or whatever. So I cross off the top row. I get my pen to work. I do. There we go. And the first column, that's going to be the x component. I cross what's left. So negative 1.6 times 503 minus negative 2.9 times negative 182. That's the i component. Okay, it's that one. Oh, this thing, come on. There we go. Let's try that again. Right there. And then I'll do the J component. So I'll cross off the top row in the next column. The J column, and I'll cross what's left. Remember, you subtract off the J column. So that's always a minus here. Always, okay? So I get 1.1 times 503 minus a negative 2.9 times 598, and I'm subtracting off that whole component. Right there. And then the last thing I do is I do the K. So I pick, cross off that column. That'll get me this one. Cross what's left. So 1.1 times negative 182 minus negative 1.6 times 595, and that's the K. And then I just run, th run through. Notice I take that extra step in there so I'm not making arithmetic errors. So I'm trying to reduce them is what I'm trying to do. And then I get negative 1333I minus 2278J plus 571K. And the units on that is Newton meters. So remember to include units on your answers, okay? So that's basically how you do a 3D moment. Find the 
force vector, find the position vector from the point to the force, and then cross, R crossed with F. Have a look at your formula sheet so you know what those formulas look like on there. Okay. And we got a test coming up on Monday, so you're going to get a calculator that you can use, a non-programmable one, and you're going to practice with it because you don't want to learn how to use your calculator while you're taking a test. That's a, that's a bad idea. Okay. I've seen people attempt that. Sometimes it goes fine, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Um, non-programmable, I think that's number one. Yeah, we gotta get like a 30 something. 36X Pro is the highest level non programmable. Yeah, but okay. The Pro is going away at OSU, so if you buy one, just get a 36X. It'll work for chemistry, physics, okay. engineering, and your fundamentals of engineering exam at the end of yeah, the Yeah, okay, right, okay. So, right, a 36 then? 36. Yeah, yeah and the X's are not letting people use those anymore. And that holds for OSU, it also holds for the FE, the fundamentals of engineering exam. Okay. So, they're fundamentals? No. Right. So, you know, they're not very expensive, the 36s, I don't think. I think they have in the bookstore for like 39 bucks. Oh, 39? Yeah, okay. You can get, you get like $10. Well, I don't know. I guess they're very yeah, particular. I think this was like $8. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I like those. But actually, but they require, on that FE, do they require a TI now? Or? No, just they just require anything, a 36X or a Casio okay. X160 or something. Right. Lower, anything lower than those work. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, that'll probably work there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that'll work. That one will work for here, but we go to OSU, they won't use the pros anymore because it integrates for you. Okay. All right, so we're going to take our answer to 201. We're going to go to 211 with it. Same physical setup. We've got the exact same stuff. We've got the exact same force. And we've got the one of the points here that we just used. Okay, so we got the same setup, but now what we want to know is what's the moment about that axis with the little plate on it. So that force is going to pull on that plate. What's the moment going to be? Okay. So what you do is you use your answer from above. The MA is negative 133I minus 2278J plus 71. Uh, 751K. This is from 201. Okay. And then to find the moment about an axis, what you do is a dot product. So you dot the moment vector above with a unit vector that goes along the axis. So I'm going to use RBA. So I take RA minus RB. And I get the vector that goes from B to A, negative 2.8, 0.7, and 3.5. Does it matter at all for direction? Could it be R, A, B? Yeah. Okay. In this case, you could use, and generally speaking with projections, you can go either direction. It'll just flip the sign on your answer is all. Okay. That's, that's the only significance of it. So if you get a negative answer it just means you should really should have gone it the other way to get oh, okay. that's all it means and it's not a big issue at all. Mm -hmm. all right. so yeah you can go b a or a b wouldn't really wouldn't make much difference you find the magnitude of that vector you divide through you get a unit vector from b to a so this is just a unit vector from b to a find take r a minus r b so RBA is negative 2.8, 0.7, Find the magnitude by taking square root of sum of the squares. It's 4.54. Divide through by that and you get the unit vector. Negative 0 0.617, 0 0.154, and 0.772. So that's a direction, a unit vector that goes, in my case, from P to A. Now what you'll do next is you'll do a dot product. You take it, you dot the force with the unit. And that will get you the magnitude of this moment about that axis system is what it'll get you. So I take the two vectors and I dot them. When you dot two vectors, you multiply the like components together, add them up and get the total magnitude, in this case 1051. 
So if I apply this force to that system you see there, I pull on that plate with that force and I have that axis set up, I'm going to get a net moment, a net torque around the axis of 1051 newton meters. If I want that in vector form, I can multiply that magnitude through the unit vector for the axis. Okay. And just to get back to your, your point there, if you'd have used AB, you would have got negative 1051, and your unit vector would have had the opposite signs. So when you got down to that final moment vector, everything would come out in the wash, because you'd have two negatives running through there, and they'll just cancel out. Okay. So it's not a big deal. With, with our moment, are we, I guess I could be combining two things, and I shouldn't be, but I guess with how I'm like perceiving it is we have our unit vector coming out this way. Um, so would it, in turn, would it be like flipping that plate, I guess? Yeah, up above instead of below, you mean? Or? Yeah, so yeah, right. flipping that way. So would yeah. it need to be negative since it would be clockwise? Can't, it's hard for me to follow your your sentence. I mean, this vector. What 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 we're saying is, by the right hand rule, your thumb points in that direction or this direction along the unit, okay. and then your right hand curls as it would. Okay. And I don't know if I even drew that sketch properly or not. I mean, okay. I'm not sure if I did. Okay. Is that is that good? Yeah. Yeah. And, cool question. yeah. Um, and this might just be the way this might be your sketch. Um, it looks like the dot that the force is coming from is the middle of the plate. Yeah. Do we have to deal with any of the distance and stuff in there? Okay. No, this all does that for you kind of magically, so to speak. It, it's okay. already accounted for that distance, okay. you know, by doing the cross. It's already picked that up. Okay. okay. All right. All right, so you all okay on doing moments then? Have we got any other questions on that? That last step is kind of that particular case of finding the moment about an axis, and it's done with a dot product. Okay. So that's the moment that Yeah, that's the moment vector down below. The magnitude is 1,051. Now this other one, I want you to do it two ways. Um, so, hang on here. So this is the same sort of problem. I'd like you to do this one uh, twice, once using AB. So that would be this vector here, and the other time using AC. You should get the same answer regardless of how you do it. Okay. I'll give you some intermediate answers here. So RBC uh, should be negative 7, 311. UBC negative 0.52. 3.224.822 and then FBC when you get to that ought to be negative 241 103 and 378 okay so there's you know just some intermediates that you can check as you go And then RAB, that's the position from A to B, ought to be 2 minus 9 minus 3. And then you just do the cross. Now you also want to find uh, and use RAC. I'll let you do that. Okay, and then you get the moment vector. What you do is you take R and you cross it with F. That's basically how those go. Yeah, right. It, it, in this one, though, you do have that. Well, no, the same steps as 201. 
Um, and the, the derivation of the force vector is different on this because you're not given angles. Questions on that? All right. Well, we take a little bit more of a look at uh, resultant sin. We're okay with that. So that stuff's due tomorrow, those, those problems.